welcome to Town Meeting Preview. I'm your town moderator, Tim Goddard. I'm joined by Interim Town Administrator, Ryan Ferraro. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. And uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, we're going to walk you through the articles that are on the, the November 1st uh, Town Meeting Warrant. And uh, generally speaking, there are a lot of transfers, uh, articles that we've seen in the past, but I think that the transfers are, uh, a, a, the nature of the transfers is lots of uh, money moving around from various accounts to fund projects such as 36 King Street, a, a new uh, school at Shaker Lane, and uh, a new senior center. So I think most of them we will debate uh, in the normal course of things. I know we, we've adopted the consent agenda process that it works very well at an annual town meeting when you have a lot of routine uh, articles. Uh, we, and there are a few candidates on this warrant uh, for, for that treatment, but by and large, I think town meeting will benefit from a discussion of, of these uh, uh, financial items. And additionally, there are some bylaw amendments, a couple of uh, zoning amendments of, of some substance. And uh, well, last but not least, a proposed uh, purchase of the Webster property uh, is Article 20. So I guess we'll start at the beginning, as we sometimes do. Ryan, do you mm -hmm. want to uh, sure. start with Article 1 and uh, sure. speak to that? Sure. Thank you, Tim. So um, Article 1 is a, a, a report that we're going to be receiving an update from our Master Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, we had uh, this presentation provided to us at one of our uh, uh, more recent select board meetings and provide an overview of all the different um, different events that are going on in town and different activities of, of following through on, on what the master plan has um, has outlined for the town and our plan. Uh, right. Our right. And the, the master plan, you'll recall, came to town meeting for approval uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is more of a, uh, a, a reporting, uh, I don't know if it's a reporting requirement, but it's mm -hmm. a, a, a way of updating the town as to the progress being made uh, toward the implementation of the plan so it's uh, it's on as article one and it'll be a brief presentation mm -hmm. uh, but we think it'll be very uh, informative uh, then article two uh, ryan All right so article two tim is um uh, is the payment of bills of prior years so when um we have a bill that uh, uh had, was due in a prior uh, fiscal year in this case uh we're going to have three and um, in all likelihood a fourth uh, bill that will be coming through uh, that was issued in a prior fiscal year. We have to get town meetings approval with uh, via nine tenths vote here at the special town meeting to get those bills paid. Um, it's unfortunate we always try to uh, uh, make sure that we pay our bills on time but occasionally there are some things that do come up and uh, this is the process by which we can get those bills paid. Very good. And this is a perfect example of something that's a candidate for the uh, consent agenda uh, treatment. Uh, we've seen this many, many times before. It's not remotely controversial. Uh, the town wants to pay its bills, has to pay its bills. And uh, the town meeting has routinely approved that as part of the consent agenda uh, in the past. We then move to uh, Article 3, electronic voting equipment. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to set that sure, up, Ryan? Sure. So um, uh, we had a, uh, I think it was a special town meeting uh, back in February, Tim. Um, right. And I think uh, by, the time, um, by the time I left a special town meeting that night, I think it was about 1, one o'clock in the morning uh, <laughs> from uh, having to uh, count up the votes um, on um, a zoning article. Uh, at that at that meeting, so one of the suggestions that would been made from that was uh, looking into the possibility of electronic voting and how uh, we could uh, then do things more expeditiously at, at town meeting. Um, we're seeing this um, throughout a lot of municipalities where um, they're. Um, uh, basically utilizing these uh, electronic voting um, mechanisms as a way to uh, make town meeting go quicker. Uh, basically, just with um, when they bring these votes up, they, people have little remote controls. They just, just like they uh, have their remotes at home to change the uh, TV channel. And um, we have those votes almost automatically. So we, the hope is that it will make things more efficient. We made a commitment to um, come to the uh, a special town meeting in November uh, and uh, put forth a proposal and with that uh, the hope would be that we'd be then be coming back to the annual meeting in May and have these uh, remotes um, in place for okay. us. Okay, so very that's the good. Hope. 
I think it's a, it's an idea whose time has come. Uh, you're right. Anyone that was at that town meeting in February, this should be a, an mm -hmm. easy vote to That's take. A, yes, Because yes. uh, the ballot and checklist, it, it, it's uh, cumbersome under the best of conditions. And mm -hmm. I think the town clerk and her, her staff have done a great job handling mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the idea of having a vote that you can mm -hmm. uh, tabulate within a, right. a minute, let's say, versus an but, hour and a half. You know, and to follow up on that, Tim, it was interesting because we were thinking that the town clerk and I were talking about that the next day and we thought about, well, there were probably, you know, somewhere close to, I don't know, 200 plus people at that meeting. So they were just waiting for an hour and a half to actually vote and then wait for it to be tabulated. So if you took 200 people and then you took an hour and a half of their time and you think about that in, in terms of, you know, uh, what we're uh, proposing to spend on this and, and think about time as money. Um, you know, we always want to be respectful yeah, no, to people's time when they come out of town. I meeting. took a lot of time. I think I, I, I noticed that the person that made the motion for that ballot and checklist vote voted and then went home. So <laughs> she was probably in bed before <laughs> yeah. the votes were tabulated <laughs> while the rest of us were still there. Yeah, it was a long night for a lot but, of people. Uh, that's true. And electronic mm -hmm. voting's been around a long time. We mm -hmm. first looked at it 10 mm -hmm. or 15 years ago and, mm -hmm. it, and it was very mm -hmm. prohibitively expensive. It was right. 75 or $100,000 mm -hmm. and not many Right. Towns had uh, adopted it. Now many more towns right. have some experience with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's true, Tim. You know, that's one of the things that you're always a little leery about becoming the beta test on something like that and being the first one in. And we know in this case that, uh, you know, this, the, the, the technology has matured in a way that uh, uh, this should be something that uh, I think we can uh, basically learn from the lessons of what other communities have done. And uh, it's, it's a rather mature technology at this point. Right. Right. And, and the, uh, the technology of the Meridia system, a number of Towns in the area have, have uh, adopted this technology, and I, I spoke to the, the town moderator and to Carlisle and Westford too, two towns that have uh, adopted it. And the thought is that we can come up with a, a, a small like a, a working group of people that uh, of communities could lend mm -hmm. additional devices to a town that was expecting yeah. an overflow of town yeah, meeting, sure. and, uh, you know, lend or borrow as the, the, the case may be. So it would save the cost of renting those devices. Mm -hmm. But certainly, uh, you know, we think that this, uh, we hope people will welcome this as an improvement right. and uh, yeah. it's on the, on the warrant uh, and it's uh, relatively inexpensive in today's terms. You in know, today's just terms, yeah. So, and again, what this, what this would be is to put the funding forward for it and then uh, we would have it hopefully available again in May for in, our annual town In meeting. May, and, and I understand the vendor would attend that mm -hmm. meeting and, and would help the town that's right. through the, uh, That's the logistics right. of it. Yes. Because I'm sure there'd be some hiccups at first, but mm -hmm. uh, the towns that use it love it. So we'll, yeah. see, how that, we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. All right, Article 4, uh, sure. some supplemental uh, capital right. items. Uh, right. One well, large and one sort of small. Can you right, speak to right. that? So this is a request to uh, transfer money out from our, um, our capital uh, stabilization fund. This requires a two-thirds vote of town meeting. Uh, the two items that we're proposing to fund out of this, uh, uh, the smaller one being uh, a new mower attachment for um, uh, for the Department of Public Works. This would go on one of the pieces of equipment that usually we utilize for plowing purposes, but what we've found is that uh, you're only using that piece of equipment um, just for the winter months, and so uh, the EPW director came to me, talked about this, and thinking, well, gee, you know, if we can get this other attachment, then we can be using this for you know, the other sure. uh, the other nine months of the year. So um, uh, that's what's being, uh, one thing that's being proposed. And the other piece is uh, $400,000 uh, for, uh, to fund professional services for um, the design uh, and, and to get uh, documents ready to go out to bid for the Indian Hill Music School for the renovation of the school. Uh, our hope, uh, Tim, is to uh, do um, basically get contract documents ready for uh, through this through this funding, and then move forward uh, at the annual town meeting to have bids in hand at that meeting, so that at May we can vote on um, you know, vote on basically renovations to uh, to the Indi former Indian Hill Music School, which we are proposing will now house okay. uh, school administration and uh, parks and recreation uh, staff. Very good. Uh, veterans of town meeting will remember that the town purchased 36 King Street only 
uh, you know, a number of months ago. I said the February, February yes, town meeting, February but no time. funds were appropriated at that point for the renovation. For so the this renovation, is right? And beginning then, to address that right, that right. portion of the. And what we did too, Tim, um, we had discussed that at the time that we were going to come back um, at uh, the May town meeting with an estimate, and we discussed that with the select board and the finance committee. But um, they had thought that they wanted a little bit more time to look at what their options were, and this will give us the opportunity to essentially know um, or, or present to town meeting what we know those uh, expenses will be for um, the renovation. We'll also be working with our permanent municipal uh, building committee um, to assist us with that as well um, to, you know, to refine the scope and um, you know, lock down those costs. Very good. Very good. Next up we have Article 5 uh, which is to rescind unused borrowing authorizations and other potential candidate for the consent agenda. Ryan, could you describe what's happening here? Sure, sure. So when the town um, uh, has prior town meetings uh, extend debt um, for uh, certain needs, um, there are times when we don't necessarily need to use all of that debt. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we've got a few items. Um, there was a, a $1 million authorization for roadway improvements, which, uh, as it turns out, we uh, didn't, didn't need. Um, library construction, there's a little bit of money left over for that, about $8,000 from what was essentially a three point one million dollar authorization library is complete and this is what we have left over thus we don't need that additional capacity and finally uh, is an ambulance purchase um, I think it, it back in 2020 um, at the special town meeting uh, there was a thought that maybe we'd be uh, borrowing to purchase a third ambulance and, and um, operationally we made a determination that we didn't need to do that uh, and uh, are choosing to uh, rescind those funds you will see in a later article however we are uh, proposing to uh, buy a replacement second ambulance and that's a little different um, you know and we'll be talking about that as well as we get to that article. right so. right I think that's actually the next article article yeah, six is that ambulance uh, replacement and replacement. I guess the, one of the big difference here is we're not using uh, debt uh, that's article. right right so we're this is uh, we're proposing um, on article six is uh, uh, $425,000 uh, to purchase a, a new ambulance. We're currently having um, some, uh, you know, the, the, the current backup ambulance is showing its age and where this is public safety, we need to make sure that those vehicles are, sure. of, yeah. uh, you know, of, of top notch safety for everybody involved. And uh, so what that would be is we're asking for $250,000 transfer from the ambulance receipts fund and another $175,000 from the capital stabilization fund. Where this is a transfer from the capital stabilization fund, Tim, this will be a two-thirds vote of town meeting. Correct. Okay, very good. Article seven, we then uh, have a, a transfer to benefit the uh, uh, feasibility study for uh, Shaker Lane School. Sure, sure. So this uh, this article, um, a prior town meeting had appropriated about seven hundred thousand uh, dollars for the feasibility study of the Shaker Lane uh, School Elementary Elementary School. We are uh, working with the Massachusetts School uh, Building Authority on um, uh, on obtaining a well, I guess what uh, owner's project manager and a designer on that school. We believe that it, um, based upon seeing what other schools have come in at that uh, we're going to need a little extra money. So this would be in addition to that additional $700,000 that we've already set aside for this. Any monies we don't spend, you know, we'll go back to free cash, but uh, we are proposing that this $385,000 will be, uh, will be out, raised and appropriate from uh, our operating budget for FY24. Very good, very good. I think th this is how I know that I'm getting old. When I first saw this article for Shake Lane, mm -hmm. I said to myself, didn't we just do that school? Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. we're, and we're talking 25 years probably mm -hmm. since we did that renovation. Yeah, so. It's funny you say that because I was reminded in my tour that the first wing of the Shaker Lane School was built in 1963. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, you know, and, uh, and but there have been uh, other additions to that. And right. what this study will be looking at is looking at the entire school and determining whether or not, well, one of the first phases and what the feasibility study specifically would be looking at is, is the need to either rehabilitate or replace the Shaker Lane School. So that's part of what the, that, that's what these funds will be used yeah. to. I know there was always a it. question about whether it could be extended to a third level. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that question was ever yeah. answered, but yeah. uh, and the feasibility also, study would, would, would answer. Would, would look at all those questions. Questions Correct. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's look now at uh, Article 8. 
mm -hmm. which is a uh, substantial transfer from the overlay reserve to mm -hmm. the capital stabilization sure. fund. Sure. So the overlay reserve, Tim, um, is, is monies that uh, we set aside in our operating budget every year that would be used for settlements um, when um, we uh, when, when someone is uh, trying to figure out uh, you know if they, if they have a question about the value of their property. So uh, we we know that there are certain cases and situations where uh, uh, they can look, the property owners could be looking for abatements at any given time. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we've been fortunate to um, have been saving this money for potential settlements and, and issues. But uh, these funds have essentially been freed up by our board of assessors and allows us to utilize those funds for other things. So in this case, what we're proposing to do is transfer $4 million from the overlay um, reserve to the capital stabilization fund. And then once those monies go in, then uh, as with um, some of the prior articles we've discussed, it's a two-thirds vote uh, at that time uh, to uh, get the funds out for other um, items that you know that are that are capital in nature. So right, it could be know, any capital project. It could be. You know, one of the things that we mentioned in here in terms of how we're thinking about it, Tim, is to be able to say that uh, you know we know that um, the renovation there will be a, a renovation at 36 King Street at some point, and so by putting this four million aside, we, we know that this would cover things such as that. We're not explicitly right. stating that. That requires, uh, again, a two-thirds vote at town meeting at yeah. a later time. But, uh, Rather than raise through taxation funds that's to right. renovate that's a project, right. you, you right. have this reserve right. that, that could be used. That's right. We're always planning and, and thinking about that and working hand-in-hand -hand with our finance committee about being strategic about this so as to uh, always be sensitive uh, to, uh, to the tax rate and, and what those implications uh, would be for, right. for taxpayers. Yeah, and, and the Finance Committee and Select Board do recommend this article and mm -hmm. have on the, the previous ones. I should have stated that. There's, mm -hmm. there's one later on that there's a division of opinion, and we'll mm -hmm. address that. Uh, article 9 is another transfer from uh, Overlay Reserve, uh, mm -hmm. kind of a smaller one, to mm -hmm. the uh, uh, CPA uh, Recreation Reserve account. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything you want to outline so, there? So, um, uh, so our board of assessors made available 4.4 million dollars uh, to us. Four million is going into Article Eight, and the uh, remaining 400,000 we're proposing to transfer to um, the uh, Community Preservation Fund. Uh, our hope is that uh, we'll be able to get a state match off of that 400,000 dollars, and that um, you know we'll be able to use some of those funds for the, um, uh, the renovation of the tennis courts at the high school, which I believe is coming up, uh, is coming up on Article 10. In Article so, 10, right. Article 10 are some mm -hmm. additional appropriations that are mm -hmm. recommended by the Community Preservation uh, Committee. Do you want to mm -hmm. run through those? Sure, Ryan? sure. So this is, um, you know, when we, every year we come uh, forward, uh, the CPC comes forward uh, at the annual town meeting recommending certain projects that are presented to them. And in this case, uh, we've got some uh, some additions that are being proposed. The first is $50,000 uh, for um, historic preservation at the um, Houghton Memorial Building for what uh, is window painting and rehabilitation of windows. Uh, next item is $8,000 uh, for uh, preservation of town records. This, these would be funds that would be utilized by the town clerk for binding um, sort of more operational pieces, but that the town records are protected. Right. And um, you know, if we, I think they use a special records person who's got skills to be right, able to... Right, an um, archivist or something. An archivist, thank yep. you. Yes, yes. Uh, and the last item um, that's being requested is uh, $734,000 for renovation of, uh, of the tennis courts uh, at the high school. This is adjacent to the 36 King Street uh, Indian Hill uh, parcel. So we're kind of thinking of this as um, uh, updates we're making to, to both sites where they are, you know, where they do back up to one another. And this would allow us to uh, basically renovate the courts, and I think we're adding two courts to that as well. So um, that's uh, something we've had a lot of discussion um, with, um, with with the select board about, and uh, we're glad to see that the CPC is supportive of, of that initiative um, and, and um, putting that forward here in the town meeting. Very good. So. Yeah, I'll notice it's a two-thirds uh, 
vote required here. Mm -hmm. A portion of these funds will be borrowed. And that's, uh, that would be the, the funds for, for the uh, tennis courts. The uh, tennis court. Yeah. Very that's good. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and since we're losing tennis courts at this location, that's next right. to the town and hall, that's, it's that's, that's important part of the to, logic, right? Yeah, so to, be to able improve to, the ones that, that we have. Right. Right, exactly. For future use, okay. Right. As well as the fact that right now, too, I think, as I understand, the tennis team uh, has some issues with the amount of courts that are down there, and this will help them uh, because I believe there will be some additional courts that we're envisioning for that site as well. Very good. Very good. And the Finance Committee and the Select Board also have uh, voted to approve, or recommend approval of these articles. Then this moves to Article 11, which is uh, uh, some funds for the Senior Center Stabilization uh, mm -hmm. Fund. Uh, we don't yet have an amount for That's that, correct. Ryan. Right, right. So um, we, we do have a, a Senior Center uh, Stabilization Fund. Um, there is a, a, a relatively small balance that's, um, that's, remain, that's remaining in there. Um, we are getting close to a point where um, we'll, we're going to be getting the bids back for that project. We hope to break ground sometime in the spring. Um, but we will be needing all of the funds and basically to exhaust what remains in the uh, stabilization fund uh, for us to be putting it toward the project. So the idea, Tim, would be to have, uh, have, uh, we'll have a motion on the floor town meeting at such point that we know what um, the remaining interest is to basically exhaust the account. So they will, that's when we'll have that number, the morning of uh, town meeting on November 1st. Uh, I think we're going to get that information I guess uh, on October 31st and, and be able to bring that forward at that time. So the inten intention is to exhaust what remains in the stabilization fund and place all of those uh, against any expenditures uh, at the uh, at the senior senior center to be to be built. Senior Very good. Center. Very good. Then we come to Article 12, uh, which is an increase in the limit uh, of the uh, park and rec. Uh, revolving a fund. Do you want to speak to that, Ryan? Sure, sure. Um, so at the May 1st uh, uh, town meeting, we approve of um, expenditures up to certain amounts in our revolving fund. And uh, in this case, I think uh, that uh, for Parks and Recreation, uh, the approval is for $1.1 million, and uh, we're proposing to increase that by another $200,000. And, and basically, that's reflective or better reflection of how much spending and, and revenue is taking place here within the account. So we just want that to, uh, want that to re accurately reflect what we are now projecting um, the spending to be in that account. OK. I think it's important to voters to remember that the revolving funds are really places where all the fees from certain programming uh, are deposited. Mm -hmm. So th this isn't really giving the park and rec any more no, money. It's giving no. them the ability the to take in to registration spend. fees Correct. and so forth and then right. to expend them on the That's programming. Right. That's right. So That's it's, right. it's something that I think w is a good candidate for consent right. agenda yeah. because we've, we've had revolving funds under consent agenda That's in the right. past. And, That's uh, right. They are not uh, really remotely controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, following up, Article 13 is another candidate, in my mind, mm -hmm. uh, for a consent agenda. It's a small adjustment to the uh, sewer enterprise uh, line item in the operating budget that mm -hmm. was voted last May. Any Right. you want to comment on there? Sure. So this is for um, our initial uh, portion of, of the sewer betterment. Um, at the time in May, we were waiting for bids to come in. Uh, on the sewer project, um, that is both the collection of sewer, so the lines that you see. Uh, you know, uh, residents have probably seen a lot of uh, work taking place in, in the roadways, um, but we're also uh, building a, um, a wastewater treatment plant as well. So what this is is reflective of that first portion of our, um, our betterment that the town would owe for uh, the work associated with the sewer project. So will be additional betterment payments that will be put in, but at the time in May when we put the budget together, we didn't know what that amount would be, knowing we would be coming forth in November to, um, to request that separately. Very good. Very good. We'll move on then to Article uh, 14, which mm -hmm. is a, a, a small transfer uh, from the Bradford-Sampson Relief for Animals mm -hmm. uh, Fund. Uh, 
Can right. you speak to that, Ryan? Right. And so, so this is uh, potentially another consent item, but yes. basically it's uh, uh, by putting money into the fund, the fund specifically uh, is for the support of um, qualifying low per, low income persons uh, for that, that are uh, to the support of their animals, actually. So uh, that's uh, part of, um, you know, it, it, it's something that I don't think we had the chance to do at the annual, and this gives us the uh, opportunity here to, um, to again, a small $6,000 transfer over uh, consistent with uh, support for people's animals. Very good, okay. very good. Uh, then we'll, we come to Article 15, which are uh, right-of-way takings in connection mm -hmm. with the Foster Street roadway. Mm -hmm. Improvement uh, project it requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, I'm thinking this probably is not a very controversial thing. It might be a, a mm -hmm. you know candidate for consent agenda, but maybe you could explain what what sort of takings we're talking about sure. here. So most of the takings are for um, uh, takings from people's property for the idea for building sidewalks um, and other. Um, uh, um, another needs associated with the project. So we, um, there's a lot of work that's happening in the Foster Street um, area as it relates to um, a, a Massachusetts Department of Transportation um, TIP program, Transportation Improvement Program. And this is, uh, they're asking the town to assist with this as we're doing our portion of the work. And part of that means that we need to be able to uh, basically obtain uh, portions of people's land so that we can build those sidewalks, uh, get those rights away in place, and um, uh, basically have the street widths and things of that nature associated with the project right. to make it a fully right. formed uh, initiative. Right. And this happens quite often with, with roadway projects mm -hmm. where uh, small portions of land are needed to, That's as right. you say, for sidewalks and, That's right. and, and other, other improvements. Uh, not to mention that uh, the town already has uh, an established mm -hmm. right of way and a lot of roads. A lot of roads That's is right. 40 feet. Yes. And yes. that may extend further than you think it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, the, it, the it town may, right. may already mm -hmm. own part of that's right. What and you think is your front yard, right? But, uh, right, and in this case, it's, uh, they're the portions of it that uh, that you know that, that the property owners do own, or uh, we need um, temporary easements on. Um, it's, there's a oh, mix sure. of different it things. It could just that we'll be, be for looking construction for. purposes. It could be, yeah, right, the ability right. to enter onto the property, right. mm -hmm. and it's all for a, a roadway improvement project. That's right. So that's the, right. The, end result is going to be well worth the yeah, that's that's the hope the minor the hope. inconvenience yeah, especially too as it ties to that area near the MBTA station as well exactly so that's the hope yes exactly okay then we come to article 16 which are mm -hmm. some general bylaw amendments some cleanup mm -hmm. of uh, language uh, do you want to speak to that sure. uh, Ryan this is sort of a, a bit of a potpourri of, of different matters here Tim um, so I'm gonna go through it the first item is a change to uh, the town administrator search committee and uh, what the select board is basically looking to do here is to have the, uh, right now in our town code, uh, if um, the town administrator position is open, then there's a requirement that that go to the town administrator search committee. Town administrator search committee then has to interview people and make recommendations for a minimum of two people to the select board uh, as potential town administrator candidates. Uh, the, um, the problem with that is that doesn't give a lot of flexibility sometimes to the board if circumstances are different. And so the board was seeking in this instance to um, have the opportunity uh, to take an alternative route if they're so inclined. So and not appoint the committee and make the... Uh and it doesn't, and they could still do that. They could still, so the idea is to not uh, remove the town administrator search committee from the town code, but to give that as an additional option for the give board, the board if that they're flexibility. so inclined, right? right? And to give them a, a right. different option on that. And, right. and, and in the language, it says that the board may, by supermajority vote, waive the appointment of the town administrator. That's right. Administrator right. screening committee. And just uh, in case you're keeping score at home, supermajority vote of the select board is four members out of five. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and the board did discuss that, the, the majority versus supermajority, so that basically they wanted to have a higher bar with the supermajority yeah, so as to sense. opt out of the town administrator uh, right. search committee um, option, if you will. Right. So, right. And this, this, this will, will be on the update sheet of town meeting to make sure we've got all of the changes that are proposed and mm -hmm. any, any last minute, uh, uh, you know, Changes to the to the article or the motion make it a bit more explicit. I think for the right. town meeting, sure. Right. It, right, a lot of it. Is, I guess I'd call it kind of a clean up or giving the board more flexibility and not 
should not be controversial, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who knows, so. right? But yeah. we'll see how that uh, right. goes. Article right. 17. Yeah. Uh, Actually, Tim, I'll, oh, I'll just a few more yeah. on this, just oh, to, no, no, for, yeah, for town I, meeting. I, I think there's a few of the smaller items here. Um, you know, we had some uh, updated titles, like there was the Board of Park and Recreation Commissioners that we want to uh, correct to um, yes, the correct it, right. title. That's the uh, So yep. a few of those things. Um, and uh, one of the other, th and then um, another item that we had in here was that currently uh, parties who can serve as our finance director also have to have the title of either town accountant or treasurer collector. And what we're also proposing to do in this case is to add the title of assistant town administrator to that as a, as a possible party who could also serve as finance director and have that dual role, if you will. Right. So Very those good. are the primary changes. Um, it's just, you know, as, as town code is, is in place, we're always seeing opportunities to, to make it stronger and, and sometimes operationally we need to update some of those things because sometimes town code can be a little, little limiting it, um, in those instances. Yes, certainly, certainly. Okay, okay then that's about it. Well, uh, looking at Article 17, uh, town meetings being asked to rescind uh, acceptance of a state uh, statute. Mm -hmm. We think that the town voted to accept this in 1959, but Mm -hmm. As you'll explain, Ryan, this right. is uh, uh, something that, that, that's a bit outdated or anachronistic. Right. right. So at the beginning of town, uh, typically our annual town meeting, Tim, we, we are uh, asked to uh, app uh, appoint um, people to certain uh, titles that, uh, frankly, um, we, we really don't use much of them. One of them being uh, say, weigher of hay. So yeah. uh, obviously, so it's, uh, it, it, this harkens back to our agricultural roots and uh, there are a few uh, other things in there. I think field driver, things of that nature. So the yeah. idea mm -hmm. of this article. Fence viewer too. Fence yeah. viewer, right. <laughs> so so it doesn't mean that those tasks go away. It just means that um, part of what, what we're looking to do is to actually reassign them to other uh, professional staff um, as opposed to uh, formally appointing someone who often doesn't necessarily have the skills to, per se to uh, to be able to do that, uh, and, and this is uh, by by just basically bringing it bringing it back means that um, we're reassigning these tasks to other professionals in town. So, uh, and it also saves us from having Article One of the annual town meeting where we have to appoint people, right. and again, it, it's respectful of people's time at town meeting because um, it, uh, you know again, taking taking those appointments does take a little bit of time. That's and, right. Uh, all right, next we have Articles 18 and 19, which are both proposed zoning amendments. And for an explanation of those, we're going to turn to Marin Tuhill, who is our town planner. Hello, Littleton. My name is Marin Tuhill. I'm the town planner. Thank you very much, Tim, for the introduction. Uh, town of Littleton Planning Board has uh, two zoning bylaw amendments for consideration at the November 1st town meeting. The first one is Article 18. Article 18 is the a proposal to amend the firearms business zoning bylaw. If you recall, at the November 15th, 2023 special town meeting, town meeting adopted the firearms business zoning bylaw. That bylaw was subsequently approved by the Attorney General's office, but the Attorney General's office did have a couple of recommendations to make the bylaw even better. Uh, the proposal in front of us for Article 18 amends that zoning bylaw by putting in place the process to revoke or terminate a special permit. And it also corrects an error in the use table. Planning Board held the public hearing on this zoning bylaw amendment on July 6th. And the Planning Board subsequently recommends that the town meeting support this article. The second zoning bylaw amendment proposed by the Planning Board is Article 19. Article 19 is a result of the MBTA community's requirements. Back in January of 2020, the legislature passed a new law that requires MBTA communities to zone for multifamily housing within certain areas of a town including within half a mile of the commuter rail station. Article 19 is built on the foundational planning work of the town. 
the MBTA community's bylaw proposal is based on the foundational planning work of the community. It's based on the Littleton Master Plan from 2017, the January 2019 Littleton Common Revitalization Roadmap, our Housing Production Plan, our King Street Common District that was adopted in 2020, and the Littleton Station Vision Plan from 2019. The zoning bylaw will bring Littleton towards compliance to the laws that I mentioned were passed in January 2020. Article 19 is a very lengthy zoning bylaw amendment. Um, looking at the end of it, section five updates the zoning at King Street Common to allow Littleton to count that 40 acre district of the IBM site to count as the majority or the um, bulk of the rezoning required for the MBTA communities. So sections one through four of the zoning bylaw amendment of article 19 um, creates a new 10 acre multifamily zoning district near the commuter rail station. Uh, this new district will allow for the missing middle housing uh, multifamily housing that can range from two duplexes on one lot up to 50 unit apartment buildings on that on that 10 acre parcel near the commuter rail station and due to recent changes in Massachusetts law this zoning article requires a 50 percent or a majority vote rather than a super majority vote to pass at town meeting planning board advertised and opened the public hearing on this zoning bylaw amendment on October 12th, and will continue this public hearing on October 26th. Following the close of the public hearing, the planning board will make a recommendation to town meeting on, on this zoning bylaw amendment. The motion will be made on town meeting floor, and we do expect a few um, minor changes in uh, the, the text that is presented in the town meeting report will be in a handout um, on town available for you um, right after uh, the planning board closes the hearing on October 26th, so shortly after that. If you have additional questions or comments on um, either Article 18 or Article 19, please contact planning board member or myself, Marin Tuhill, in the town planning office. And uh, next we have uh, Chase Gerbig of the Littleton Conservation Commission to discuss Article 20. Thanks, Marin. Hi, everyone. My name is Chase Gerbig. I'm the co-chair of the Littleton Conservation Commission. And we've brought forward for the November 1st town meeting Article 20, an, an article to acquire what's called the, the Webster property. And what I want to do here is describe to you the Webster property, why we've brought it forward as a conservation land uh, article, um, and, and also describe to you some of the sort of the background of how we got to where we are with, with this acquisition. So first, let me set the stage with respect to the, the Webster land. It's a, a 36 acre, approximately 36 acre piece of property that is located uh, sort of west of Bulkley and, and south of Foster. And this land has, um, has got a lot of really interesting ecosystems associated with it. And, and there's a lot of both conservation potential as well as passive recreation potential associated with the land. And by passive recreation, I mean trails and, and other opportunities for the, the town and the public to, en to enjoy this land. Um, the land itself is a, a really interesting and, and diverse mix of upland forests, there's a, some streams or a stream that runs through it. There's a, a portion of the property that's a wetland. There's a portion of the property that is uh, a vernal pool. Um, and then there's, there's an open meadow portion of it. So what we see in, in this 36 acres is a really diverse set of ecosystems that are both interesting and useful from a, a biological standpoint, right, in terms of animals and wildlife. Um, as well as, as what we think people would enjoy from a recreational um, purpose. So when we look at conservation land and when we think about what is valuable to bring forward to the town, one of the, the main things that we look for are pieces of property that are um, 
large enough to support both the, the conservation goals and the passive recreation goals. And um, frankly, we, we as a town don't see a lot of parcels or an opportunity to acquire a lot of parcels that are on the order of, of 30 to 40 acres. And what's special about 30 to 40 acres is that uh, the, the ability for wildlife to use it and the ability for people to use it is it expands significantly as the piece of property expands. And it's not just a one-to-one -one increase. So a, a 36 acre piece of land is, is obviously much more useful and valuable than a one acre piece of, piece of land. But I'll tell you, it, it's much more than even 36 times the value of a single acre because wildlife um, needs room to move because people want, want locations for trails. And, and so on. Um, so this really diverse ecosystem supports all kinds of wildlife from the big to the small bobcats and uh, deer and so on, down to some really interesting salamanders and, and so on in the, um, in the vernal pool. So uh, we've brought it forward because we think it's got high conservation value, high conservation potential, and high recreation potential. One of the challenges of the article is the price. Um, and one of the things that you'll see in the town meeting warrant is that the, the asking price of this at 1.6 million is, is significantly above the appraised price. And we've brought this forward to the town to, to express an opinion about whether or not they want to acquire this land for, for two reasons, really. The first is that the town has consistently and overwhelmingly expressed a desire and an interest to conserve recreational open space parcels. And we, we've done that as a community through open space and recreation plans over many generations. And in fact, I, I expect the, the upcoming open space and recreation plan will we'll see the same sorts of sentiments that we've seen in the past with respect to open space. But our master plan also calls for us to, to seek out and, and to conserve valuable pieces of, of open space. Um, the other reason is Although this piece of property is more expensive than the, or the, the seller is asking for more than the appraised price, the appraised price that the town had done, um, the per acre price is consistent with what we've paid for recent large acquisitions in town, the Browns Woods property and the Joyce Williams property. And so um, what we're looking at in this scenario is, is a land acquisition that is in lieu of the, the property owner selling it to a, a developer. Uh, the, the property owner has an offer from a developer for that $1.6 million, which is how we arrived at that number, and um, is giving the town an opportunity to buy this in lieu of them selling it to the developer. And so what you'll hear at town meeting is, I, I think these comparing and contrasting these, these differing priorities between conserving open space and the financial implications. But let me give you a closing thought here. Um, there are finite opportunities to conserve open space and you don't get a lot of second bites at that apple. Once this property is developed, going backwards to, to conservative as open space is um, uh, an extremely unlikely scenario. And, and consequently, even with the financial challenges, we think it's worthwhile to bring forward to the town to discuss and evaluate how this fits into our collective goals of, of conserving open space. So look forward to seeing you at, at town meeting on November 1st. So with that, I'll send it back to the studio. All right, so thank you, uh, Marin. Thank you, Chase, uh, for your help with uh, explaining the warrant. Those are the 20 articles that uh, you'll see at the uh, town meeting, which again is going to be uh, on uh, Wednesday, November 1st at seven o'clock in the uh, Charlie K gymnasium at the middle school. I think uh, everyone should have received their booklet in the mail. I know I got mine this week and please bring this with you to town meeting. And uh, additionally, th well, this contains the articles, the motions, the finance committee's recommendations, uh, and so forth. Additionally, there'll be an update sheet uh, provided for those articles for which motions may have changed, and there are a few, but we don't think there'll be too many. But between those two documents, you'll be you'll be well positioned to uh, to navigate uh, through town meeting. And uh, again, it's November 1st, and it's at the, the middle school. The information uh, will be posted on the town website if you have any questions. Uh, you can uh, reach out uh, to either Ryan or myself. Uh, 
And I think I think that just about does it, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Anything uh, I'm forgetting? Tim, the only thing I'd say is I just want to express my gratitude to staff to be able to get this document out to uh, every taxpayer and resident in town. It's a it's a big challenge, and I particularly yeah, yeah. Uh, want to thank uh, my staff, specifically Kelly Hebert, uh, uh, Lisa Montgomery, and Diane Dickerson, as well as uh, all the other staff, which. Uh, assisted us in putting this together. This is a team effort and we're fortunate to have a good team in Littleton here helping us out. So we're very lucky for that. So my sincere yep. thanks to them. Abs absolutely. Uh, to them, I, I, I uh, should have mentioned that. that together. But, uh, yeah. So again, we hope to see you uh, at the special town meeting uh, Wednesday, November 1st. And until then, uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Ryan Ferrara and Tim Goddard signing off. Mm -hmm. And again, reach out to us if there are any questions, uh, or you know, certainly read through the booklet and uh, check the information available on the town website. Thank you very much. Thank you.